And uh, that's the redemption. I'm going to let her speak about it. We've got such gifted people among us. God has really, really blessed us. And uh, so, Ginny, I'm just going to let you say what you need to say about it before you you blow the start of the day. Um, back in the spring, when I was with Brenda and other intercessors in, in Israel and the Temple Institute, we were looking at all the artifacts and there was a trumpet. Amen. My eyes alighted on this trumpet immediately because it's been such in my heart that there was this sound of an awakening mm -hmm. that we need to bring to the body of Messiah. Amen. And when they said, is there anybody who can blow it? Probably not expecting, especially not a lady of my age to be able to blow the trumpet. And they're like this. So when I blew the trumpet, there was something reverberating in my spirit. And I felt that God said, I want you to study this now. So I went away and looked, particularly in Numbers 10, which is a reference to the two silver trumpets that I've actually commissioned. These are brand new commissioned trumpets, handmade. Wow. 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 My brother-in-law, who's one of ex-brother-in-law, sadly, who's one of the best trumpet makers in the UK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bless him. But it seemed that God was telling us something very prophetic. So, in Numbers 10, it says at the beginning, Make two silver trumpets of hammered work. You shall make them, and you shall use them for summoning the congregation and for breaking camp. And when both are blown, all the congregation shall gather themselves to you at the entrance of the tent of meeting. So there's two things. The first blowing is the calling of the congregation, or even the calling of the elders and the leaders. And the second blowing is an alarm. And the alarm is to move people on. Hallelujah. So it says in the scriptures, um, if I could just pray those a little bit, and when they are sounded, the entire community assembled before you at the entrance of the tent of meeting. So this is here. We're assembled. When only one is sounded, then just the leaders, the head of the clans of Israel, are to assemble before you. <coughs> and then it goes on to say a strategy. When you go to war in your land against those who oppress you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets, that you may be remembered before the Lord your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. And what's interesting is when the trumpet was blown, the tribes, the 12 tribes, went into four groups. There was a strategy. It wasn't just the 12 tribes all shambling off. And I believe that today, Amen. through General Brenda and others, that there's going to be a downloading of a specific strategy, which we can echo as we stand and just hear the trumpet blown. Those four tribes were Judah. Judah moved off first, hallelujah, with Issachar and Zebulun. Then Reuben with Simeon and Gad. Ephraim with Manasseh and Benjamin. And Dan, who was a rear guard, with Asher and Naphtali. So I think I sense it's time to prophetically blow the trumpet for the moving of the body. Yes, yes. It's not that we're not assembled, but we're not moving. He wants us to move off. Absolutely in the strategy and the rank and file that he gives us. Even yesterday as young villain was speaking concerning the 7,000. Now, God had already spoken to my heart. I'm, I mean, I've been in the Messianic world for so many years. I haven't actually been in a regular church, but now I'm in a church. I'm in a company. And I know a pastor, a lady pastor of some standing in Sheffield, where I am. And the Lord spoke to me some months ago. And I'm taking her on holiday for a few days of rest with the express wish from the Lord's command, really, to share with her about Israel. This is what I'm thinking. If we all, being 70, take one pastor, that we can say we are going to be bold. And we were calling last night in the night watch. And Janet, I don't know where Janet is. Janet may share something. She had a, a dream which she shared. And it triggered off something in me that now is the time. And if each of us can ask the Father to show us one pastor that we can start to see and then boldly make a decision about it. It's a Shema book. It's here, listen, and obey.
Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. You will realize that we may need big wonders for Britain and Israel to come under the benediction of the Lord. It's an impossible task, but I believe the Lord puts it upon us. Then Joshua spoke to the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and cross over before the people. So they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people and the Lord said to Joshua this day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses so I will be with you Amen. and then of course there is after that let's all sit down let's all sit down then of course there's afterwards the amazing story of the first capture of the first city, of the land that was promised. I would not be able to preach this sermon or talk if I had not the hope and the promise that there is a possibility for Britain to come back yeah. under Amen. the anointing of Amen. God. Amen. And I think that is incredible. We heard Richard pray yesterday under the singing and the worship for righteous parliaments. And before I come back to this passage, I want you to realize how impossible what we are trying to achieve here in the spirit first yeah. in the heavenly spirit yes. is because if God would speak to the members of parliament and the ministers in the cabinet in Britain to be pro-Israel it would mean it would mean to anyone that is in Westminster, the total economic downfall of Britain. Because the Arabs immediately will put their pressure, take their money out of the banks. So what you're praying for, if you say, oh Lord, will you make them strong for righteousness in Israel, is for the downfall, the economic downfall of Britain. And they will say, I want you to, I want to be straight with you. You have to know this if you are a priest. Because if you don't know it, all they will think is that you are a flippant little Christian that have your little prayers, but don't know the enormous consequences of being pro-Israel today in England. And when they sense that you don't understand, you've already lost your thought. So I want you to know, the moment 
that the Prime Minister and the Parliament will do what we pray for them to do, we will have exactly what I experience with my Israeli people in the everyday in Israel. You will have terrorists blow up your supermarkets, your buses. I don't know if you realize that they had the true pro-Israel minister, prime minister in Spain. We had Bibi for dinner just after he had been two days with his friend, the prime minister. He's no more. He was to the right and he was pro-Israel. And the Arabs didn't want him to be re-elected. So they made a terrorist attack on the metro in Madrid and killed more than 100 people. And the Spanish people were so shocked. This is no, we must not be too close to Israel. And voted for a critical leftist prime minister. That is in front of us. But there is more. And then you will understand why we need wonders. And Jimmy, you can go with me everywhere. What you said, what you said was in a nutshell what God put in my heart. May God bless you. But I want to tell you how complicated it is. Not just in the political realm. That's bad enough. But in the spiritual, religious realm. I still remember a Christian pro-Israel leader who had national pro-Israel prayer breakfast in Washington, D.C. A real mover and a shaker. Lover of Israel. A Baptist. An Israeli ambassador in Washington, D.C. said to him, I know you have your Southern Baptist Convention again. It would be so helpful if you could make a proclamation about the biblical basis that Christians have to stand behind Israel, that you will come out with a statement for Israel in the light of the Bible that you believe. So he said to the ambassador, I don't think that's a problem. Because the Southern Baptist, Billy Graham, who made a film about Israel, his land, Cliff Richards, was one of the players there. You were Cliff Richards. And how then say many of the Baptist they write pro-Israel books, so we thought this is, oh, of course, the ambassador. I take care of that. And I want you to know this because this is the reason why so few churches come around to what we believe is the key to some years of mercy to Britain. And if you don't know that these are the things you will not be able to pray them out. Mm -hmm. So, he went to the Southern Baptist Convention, talked to the key leaders, and he said, I, Israelis, the Israeli ambassador would like to see a, a statement of support in the light of the Bible. Well, <coughs> I don't think that's a problem, so they made a wonderful statement. We here together in the Southern Baptist Convention, see the return of the Jewish people to their land in fulfillment of God's promise throughout the scriptures. Beautiful statement. <coughs> Isn't that easy? If it's the Bible so clear for every church, so how come? There's so few who come out with such a statement. Am I speaking now not about the World Council of Churches? They are already lost Yes. to the Palestinian cause. Right. Yeah. I'm not speaking of the Catholic Church, I'm speaking about the two churches that still 
have a deep respect for the Word of God, which is the Evangelicals and the Charismatics. And they are the biggest Protestant churches. The Assembly of God and the Baptist Church are the biggest Protestant churches. So that's good. And so they made this statement. And of course, they opened the floor for people to add to it or to criticize it. And one of the brothers or one of the pastors stood up. And said, gentlemen, we are here as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whose main command to us to carry his gospel is to preach his gospel to the other most parts of the earth. If you are going to make this statement, I want to warn you that you may just as well close all your missions in the Muslim world, 41 nations, for they will close your permissions to preach the gospel if we as a Southern Baptist Convention come out with such a pro-Israel platform. I wonder how many of us would have the guts still to stand with God and His Word. Because that's a difficult argument. This is not the transcending church. This, this is much more, this is much more closer home. This is, this is an argument that speaks to us, sons and daughters of God. It catches us in our weak parts to deny Israel in order to preach the gospel. And that is probably one of the reasons the Trinity Holy Trinity Brooklyn has stayed away from Israel because they are so old world evangelists. So, I spoke to all the leaders of the Assembly of God about this point. And I think I said to them, is our God big enough because that's, that's where, you, where you win. Is our God big enough that if I'm faithful to Him and His love and purpose for Israel, He can take care that His gospel will not be heard? That's the question. Amen. But most of us are Christian politicians and that's why we cannot have any authority and power to get parliament members to do even more difficult things, for they will see terror and the pulling away of huge amount of money as a result of what you want them to do. If we cannot stand up against the devil when he comes as an angel of light and says, you must preach the gospel. And if you speak too much about Israel, that will be difficult. So we are caught in our very innermost soft parts. And we have to stand before the Lord and believe that if in wisdom and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit we will yet do what He says, that we will also in the end see that it is the wisest way. Amen. Because if we do not stand up to Islam yes. and say, well, let's not do too much for Israel. I've sometimes said to people in my sermons, even if you don't know the Bible, I hope you're selfish enough to be for Israel. Because as long as Islam is busy 
with Israel, which is a very has a very good army, she will not come yet to Britain. So if Holy Trin Trinity Brompton Church wants to have their feast of freedom and preaching and going all over the world, and hope not being with Catholics or being invited in Canterbury, if they want to continue this, they better be pro-Israel. Mm -hmm. Because Israel is the only power on the earth under God that can stop the advance of Islam. Mm -hmm. So in the end, you're wise if you follow God. Mm -hmm. Now I found to say this because then you know what we're up against. Yeah. Huge powers and problems. Mm -hmm. It's thick walls mm -hmm. with giants looking at you. Mm -hmm. You come to tell me I have to be provincial when Britain is already wavering on on the road to bankruptcy, and you come with this message, this is your law. And if you have not heard it, what I say, if you have not sold it out, you've been floored already in the first 10 minutes with your partner. But if you have, if you have sold it out with God, he says, God, I want to be faithful to you. I don't want to be a politician as a Christian or as a son of God, like the politicians who say, we have to be careful for the economy and for the terror. They don't claim to be worshippers. You claim. So, you have to say, Lord, isn't that what Brenda says? Israel is the key to the future of Britain. And that's my first question. I had three, that's why I'm so thankful, Miss Jenny. I have three things that come from this passage. Joshua 3. To, to win this battle, this impossible battle, with the big walls and with... We look fools, let's be honest, we look fools to any normal parliament member. We are fools! There are three things. To win this battle, you have to have the appointed leader from God. One. Two, you have to know the way, the strategy. That's why Jenny's words were so familiar. The strategy. You have not gone this way hitherto before. That's why I keep a distance. The familiarity that we have. Oh, we, we know how to pray. And sometimes, Forgive me if I was a bit critical yesterday, maybe. But sometimes, sometimes, the ones who think they know how to pray, they don't know. You know why? Because even prayer is so holy that the Paul says, we don't know how to pray as we ought. But sometimes people pray because they think, I'm familiar with this. I've done this so many times. Oh, Lord. You have to enter your prayer time by saying, Lord, I don't know what to pray for. And when we pray something, we have to stick. That's why I'm so thankful for Q Day. Because I was trained also by British to do it this way, so don't be. Offended or something. We have to be an army. And sometimes we have to say, right. come on, get in line. That's right. yeah. We have to be an army. And my sister said it. And so we have to stick to one point. We're not going to off to battle and to I, to Jerusalem and to Jericho. Lord, we claim, we claim, we claim. No! We will also in our prayers concentrate on the object that the Lord has given us. And if Trinity Brompton is God's Jericho, spiritual Jericho, yes. we have all to pray only for that. Right. Amen. And not pray all over the world. Yeah. 
so that we can win. I want to win with you. I'm not even British. I want to win. So, you have to know who's your leader. You know, sweet lady. <laughs> I have not done this often. This God that points me calls. Yes. Yeah. As I said, I prefer males, but sometimes a woman is. 